Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, father and son duo Jerry and Dave Byrne are on a mission to help businesses to maximise their R&D output and their business, ReadyWatch, is a software as a service offering which seeks to do just that. Co-founder Dave Byrne joins us now to tell us more about the business. So Dave, when did the ReadyWatch story actually begin? Carl, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be on. Well, the, the story for ReadyWatch actually started back in 2014. Um, I was moving into the world of finance, investment banking. Uh, I was interested in private equity, actually. Um, and at that stage, uh, my father, Jerry Byrne, uh, retired as Dean of Engineering and Architecture in UCD. At that stage, uh, he pitched to me the idea of starting a consultancy business together, so going the entrepreneurial route, um, in the space of innovation and R&D. Um, and basically, the, the pitch for, for at that stage was, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And that really applies to companies when it comes to innovation and R&D. In the academic world, um, there's very clear metrics for research excellence for doing R&D. There's very clear KPIs that are associated with it. But when you ask that question for companies, you know, how do you measure R&D and its impact in the company? Um, that's more of a fuzzy thing uh, at that time to answer. So we started a consultancy business together, 2014 through 2019, 2020. And then that's where the idea for ReadyWatch as a technology company stemmed from. Um, so I'm heavily in the space of innovation and R&D for a good number of years now. Uh, during that time, we were working with some great Irish innovators. For example, CombiLift, uh, who'd be a forklift manufacturing innovator uh, up from Monaghan. We'd be working with Croom Precision Medical, for example, a great Limerick-based precision engineering company. And in the southeast region, uh, we we're very fortunate to work with an excellent engineering and technology company called Keenan Altec in the agricultural space, which is a great source for innovation as well in this country in Ireland. So ultimately, the gap in the market that you identified was the fact that businesses weren't measuring the impact of R&D. Is that right? So if you're a company and you're dealing with innovation and R&D, you have innovation and R&D in play in your business or you're thinking about it as part of your overall um, processes, uh, typically um, what you start thinking about uh, is the claims. So typically innovation and R&D only starts coming up on the agenda around claim time. And that will be for R&D tax credits, which we can discuss again, or for grant funding, which there's a phenomenal amount of supports that are out there. But typically what happens in that case, Carl, is that you start to look backwards. What did we do previously in terms of innovation and R&D? And how can we form that into some sort of a claim in a retrospective way? And really, that's the way it's being predominantly dealt with in the market. And that's where we saw a gap. It can be time consuming. It can, be, it can cause a lot of headaches to have to look backwards and try to classify things as R&D. And so where really, we really, really saw a gap in the market was to essentially take a proactive stance, to flip that model on its head, to get companies thinking proactively about their innovation and R&D strategy, hit the spot and maximize the supports out there like R&D tax credits, like grant funding. And then the best thing is don't leave those documents that you do for the, for the grant reports and for the tax credit reports on the shelf. They should be driven back into the business to drive further insight. That's where we really saw the gap in the market, Carl. Now, that's a very interesting point you're making, Dave, because ultimately what you're saying is that so many businesses are looking at R&D as a way to reduce their tax exposure or indeed claim grants, as opposed to looking at it from a very positive perspective in how it can actually help the business develop new products and services and ultimately increase sales and profits. Absolutely. And uh, one of the tricks that we do, which I'd recommend anyone thinking of this, uh, listening to it, is instead of focusing on your products and your services, which you constantly do, you have to be customer obsessed, think about what core technologies you might be advancing in your business that underpins all of your products or all of your services. What technologies, what's your secret sauce that you really have across your product range, your product suite that you're actually advancing? And that's a trick to figuring out what your R&D is. And of course, the other side of this is the fact that when it comes to innovation, they should be looking at this through the customer lens. Absolutely. Customer-centric innovation is a key pillar. Um, and so we worked quite closely and would be very supportive of all of the Enterprise Ireland innovation and R&D supports that they provide. And customer-centric innovation is at the core. If you can even be ahead of your customer, create value and really drive technology forward that will serve your customer base, that's a really good recipe for success, which we've seen numerous case studies of in Ireland again and again. Talk to us about the suite of grants and tax supports that are available to businesses. Absolutely. And I'll go beyond that, Carl, and I'll say 
in order for a company to really strongly invest in innovation and R&D, I would say that those tax credits and grant funding supports are beyond optional. They're absolutely essential and really, really important to drive it forward. Um, so in terms of the supports that are available uh, in Ireland, uh, I'll, I'll comment on for the now, um, is I suppose there's a range of uh, more business-focused supports, and then there's a range of more technology development-focused supports. So from that perspective, there's grant funding agencies like Enterprise Ireland, who uh, you know established businesses might be an Enterprise Ireland client. There's Intertrade Ireland, for an example of uh, the link between North and, and, and Republic of Ireland. And there's many other grant funding agencies that are out there that will support innovation and R&D. And one key differentiator is that a lot of those grant supports will be aimed around commercialization, whether that's commercialization of a new product, of a new service, and you'll have to develop a technology further and then also have a commercialization element to it. And then for the more technology development focused grant supports, that'll be purely in and around advancing a technology. So doing research and development uh, in the more classical way that's thought about in terms of technology development. That ties in with the R&D tax landscape. Uh, the R&D tax credits are not designed to support direct commercialization. They're designed to support the advancement of science or technology. Um, so for example, if you're launching a product or service, and you do your pre-work, which is the R&D, before you actually do any commercial activities, that might be considered for the R&D tax credits, but the actual launch of the product itself and the costs around the launch might not be eligible for R&D tax credits, whereas you have a better bet with the grant funding support to get that. One final thing, Carl, that I might add is that you can often combine. And when you're thinking about your R&D, and this is going back to my original point, it can be very confusing to position all these pieces together when you're looking backwards it becomes a whole lot easier when you're planning looking forward. That makes total sense. Now, in Ireland, what percentage of companies are actively engaged in R&D and what value does it create? Yeah, really, really good question. Um, it's actually a difficult one to answer in terms of the percentage. So what do you use? You rely on some indicators. So, for example, in Ireland, despite the vast amount of companies that are active in Ireland, there's about 1,800 companies that are actually claiming R&D tax credits, would you believe, which is a relatively no, low number, um, which, you know, we need to increase. We need to get more companies engaging with those R&D tax credits. Of that, um, the actual expenditure for the R&D tax credit claims, about 40% of it from Irish-owned enterprises, that's actually coming from venture capital-backed startups. So if you look at the expenditure and you look at the R&D tax credit number of claimants in Ireland, there actually needs to be an increase overall. There's tons of established businesses out there that are innovative, that have not engaged yet, that we really, really want to see engaging with this, with these incentives, with these uh, regimes. Uh, in terms of value creation to Ireland, I suppose there's a number of factors there. Um, Ireland is a huge hub for U.S foreign direct investment and back you know looking backwards uh, into the last century that was originally set up as a european kind of operations hub but actually because of the skill set in ireland because of the skills that we have in this uh, country third third level education really really skilled workers and access to that european market we've actually become an r&d hub for a lot of us based multinationals so r&d in ireland is creating tons of value tons of employment uh, in the region and also from Irish owned enterprises there's an increase in job growth and export. Dave I'm conscious as well that 90% of SMEs in Ireland employ less than 10 staff so there's small businesses usually an owner manager in place so when it comes to SMEs involved in R&D what sectors stand out to you in that regard? That's a really really good point um, in terms of you know let's say small businesses if you want to call them that uh, with, with, you know, the owner, manager, founder uh, involved. One of the things that I'd look to across multiple sectors is the rise of digital. So, and, and I'll get into the specific sectors in a second, but across all sectors, whether you're a hardware company or whether you're uh, dealing with software already as a company in terms of your products or services, digitalization is happening and is sweeping across the world. So if there are any particular digitalization activities that you are doing, you might consider those in the context of innovation and R&D, no matter what type of business that you are. Um, that being said, where we do see uh, the vast majority of the R&D expenditure in a, in a way that's you know, centered around, let's say, the grant funding, the tax credits and those kind of supports, uh, we do see uh, actually a number of, of sectors, Carl. So, you know, you have your pharmaceutical, you have your medical uh, technologies, your med tech, 
you have precision engineering, food manufacturing, um, all examples uh, of these actually can be found in the southeast region. So across a range of sectors, Carol, you'll find that R&D and innovation is actively happening. And that's, I suppose, one takeaway message. It's very likely, if you're listening to this call and you're a business owner, that you are innovating, that you are doing R&D. The difference is that you might not actually be recognizing or, or getting the most value out of it in terms of highlighting it within your business. And that's really the message I'd like people to take away, is that you likely are an innovator if you have a commercially successful business. So, Dave, how is your company ReadyWatch supporting companies on this journey? What we take is that retrospective model that I've described um, and flip it on its head. So with our platform, uh, you can basically log in. You can define your company's strategy for innovation and R&D, doing it the right way. You can follow the best-in-class procedures and processes to basically map out your R&D projects, maximize the grant funding and support, tap into the tax credits, and manage it all on the cloud. So the company now has a base in Toronto. Why did you select Canada as a key growth market? Canada has been on the target list for us since we actually incorporated the business. And there is a large market of innovation and R&D with very, very similar dynamics to Ireland, Carol, in terms of tons of manufacturing companies that want to get innovation and R&D right. There's the same type of supports, grant supports, tax supports that are out here. Um, And it's a, a large market. So I suppose... What we saw here as a growth market is that uh, uh, Canada and more specifically Ontario would become our North American hub. What we're planning to do here, I suppose, is establish a hub and drive business development and drive customer success roles in the region. So we will be expanding the the team uh, in uh, Toronto and in Ontario as well. So how does the company then plan to gain traction in the Canadian market? So we have a two-pronged business model. Uh, one prong is we go directly to customers, and by that I mean directly to innovating companies, uh, SMEs, who are you know, dealing with innovation and R&D like we discussed. We also have a partner uh, model. Uh, so we actually work directly with R&D tax practices. We work with grant funding consultants. We work with business strategy consultants, IP attorneys, and others who help companies along with innovation and R&D. Uh, we actually have partnership models with them where they might use our technology to manage their services, or they might actually just refer and and commission us in uh, as part of their services as well. And what are the long-term growth plans for the business, Dave? We want to be a global leader in the delivery of digital solutions for innovation and R&D in management, funding, collaboration and investment. We see a lot of players are providing very, very specific services, you know, for example, R&D tax support brand supports, etc. What we want to be is a solutions provider that can play with the entire market and really drive it forward so that companies can actually embrace innovation in R&D and unlock their potential. So we really have ambitious plans for this company for growth. In that vein, we're currently on the IPO Ready program uh, with the European Stock Exchange uh, run in Ireland at the moment. That's exciting. And finally, in terms of any company owner listening this morning that is interested in developing an R&D framework, what factors should they be considering? Absolutely. A really, really good question. So the first thing I'll say is make sure uh, to log on to readywatch.com. That's ready with an I or E-A-D-I dash watch.com and click the chat button and chat to one of our specialists. That'll give you a great grounding for, for, for thinking about this space. What I will ask business owners to take away from this is you know your products, you know your services, you know your customers. What might be the core technologies that you're actually advancing in your business? You might be using technologies, but are you actually advancing technologies? Have a think about that. How could you frame that? And that's a really, really good starting point for thinking about introducing innovation and R&D into your business. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Dave Byrne from Ready Watch, and we wish the company every success in achieving its growth goals. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.